In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my entire guide to offense and defense in Madden 21, how you can basically learn exactly what I do in a live online game. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to make sure you hit that subscribe button below. We do videos every single day that can help you get better at this game. My name is Cody, and the channel is all about helping people become better Madden players. So if you want to get better, be sure to subscribe. Again, what I'm doing in this video is I'm basically walking you through step by step why I do the things that I do in a live head-to-head -head matchup of Madden 21 and so if you have not already subscribed like I said be sure to do that the exact offense and defense that you are going to see me run in this gameplay are going to be linked in the description of this video on defense I'm running the nickel 335 wide I believe it is the best defense in the entire game and if you want to learn exactly how I run it you can get that guide in the description it will walk you through step by step exactly what I do and why I do it and if you want to learn my offense, I run the New York Jets playbook that has the gun bunch, the bunch tight end, and the trips tight end offset in it. You can get that guide in the description of this video below. And uh, again, that's going to teach you exactly why I do what I do. So anyway, starting off here, uh, I got my wish. Uh, I, you guys probably know by now that I love to make sure that I always kick the ball off if given the opportunity. And so what I mean by that is if I am given the opportunity to choose whether or not I want to kick the ball or receive the ball I always want to kick the ball that's the, that's really where it is best um, you know best done and so as you can see right here got a nice little swat on third and six it's gonna bring up a fourth down and six uh, for my opponent but the reason I do that is because it allows me to get the ball at halftime and that is huge in Madden because it basically guarantees you that you're never really out of the fight you're never really out of a game um, because you can always just get the ball at halftime and be able to have an opportunity um, to go down and score so that's one of the primary reasons as to why I personally really 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 like uh, to kick the ball if given that opportunity to do that now I'm running a little bit of a different different style of defense. I actually really like the defense and the way that I'm running it right now. But basically what we're doing um, is I'm using a lot of principles from the cover six um, and the cover four quarters in combination with one another. And so as you can see here, you know, and right there, I just didn't think he'd be able to get that first down with this quarterback. I should have let go of my my user on the blitz and should have allowed him to tackle him. Unfortunately, I made a mistake and that's going to lead to him getting a little bit of a first down, a little bit of a blessing uh, for him. But as you can see right here, I really do like this style of defense. It's really simple to run, and that's why I like the 3-3-5 wide. The 3-3-5 wide is very simple, but at the same time, it is very, very, very effective. Now, right here, you see this little middle high-low glitch that he's doing. It's basically to try to get the cover four quarters open, and as you can see right there, he is able to do that. And so there's some ways that I could go about trying to stop that. Simple man coverage will be able to take that away um, if I do some things differently. But I do have to kind of watch out for that as he's gone to it back to back and you know both times that cover four that little middle high low route is so glitchy and um, I got to watch out for that but really the defensive guide we'll talk to you a lot about this when you if you get the defensive guide but basically what we talk about in the defensive guide um, is we just talk about the simplicity of trying to force our opponents to have to work the ball up and down the field and really have to be consistent in their execution and so our goal on defense is really not not necessarily to try to stop my opponent but my goal is rather to just simply try to force him to take a field goal if i could force him to take a field goal that's really considered um, a win right here he actually gets me with a nice little dot on that out route and he's going to go down into a first uh, a first and goal situation. So some good routes by my opponent, some good things he's doing uh, in the passing game to start off, a couple good routes. Um, honestly, I feel like the defense is doing fine. Uh, we're just not able to get that one stop that we need. But right here, going to go to a little bit of a little bit of a fullback dive style run defense, but he does end up getting he is going to end up getting in for six. So good drive by my opponent, and we're going to have ourselves a little bit of a ball game. Now, offensively, I feel really confident in my offense right now. The bunch tight end is really kind of where I've been starting, um, and the reason why is just for the simplicity of it. The bunch tight end is a very simple offense, and that's why I like it so much. Um, due to the simplicity of the offense, it allows you to really be more effective at execution. Now, right there, I made a little bit of a mistake. I actually called my kick return play before he called his kickoff play. Um, the reason I say that is a mistake is because you always want to wait just in case you're playing someone that wants to try to do little onside kicks or things like that. You just want to be 
safe. Um, if you don't, if you, if they come out an onside kick and you're not ready for it, um, I've just, it's just been my experience. But this year, I find that it, it's increasingly uh, high that people are recovering those kicks, and so you just want to play it safe. And unfortunately, there, I just made a little bit of a mental mistake uh, in not doing that. But we got the ball. We're down 7 nothing, but we do get ball at halftime. So we just need to get down and score. Uh, right here, if you notice on the right side, that's where his best pass rusher is. So if um, on this next play, I'm going to probably switch Bakhtiari uh, so that he's on that same side. A little bit of a matchup situation. But here is going to go with some man coverage, and that should be a one-play touchdown. You can't really hang with Devontae Adams and man coverage, especially in Madden 21 with him having the route check ability. If they don't have someone better, we're going to take that easy, easy touchdown. Now, it does look like he's running the big nickel over G and went with a cover zero cover zero blitz right off the rip. And uh, that's why I personally don't do that a ton. Uh, I do blitz and I do run cover zero, but I don't. I really do pick and choose my spots. Um, I might call that maybe one to three times a game, and I would never call that on the first play because if you bust a coverage, you basically gave them seven points, and you didn't have to even really play. You know, you, they didn't have to really play offense. As you saw, I mean, it was literally just simple little easy dot over the top, you know, one play touchdown kind of thing. So that puts us back in a good position, honestly, because now he's going to have to come out, show more of his offense, show more of his scheme. And it's just going to give us the uh, opportunity to be able to get some tape on him and uh, be able to kind of, you know, in the beginning of these games, you're really kind of filling out your opponent, just trying to kind of see, like, what is he doing and why is he doing it? Um, you know, so like right here, he's going back to empty base flex. Um, it's very, very likely that he is running the play uh, middle high low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some man coverage on the circle receiver here. Um, you know, just kind of just kind of be simple. Um you know, just trying to keep the, the man coverage right there, right there, and then we're going to go get him. Yep, and that was much better defense. So you see the man coverage. Sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes in a match defense, you actually, it, it might be better just to man them up. And so uh, most people, if people would truly, like, say, okay, I'm running match defense. Well, the problem is with the, what this guy's doing is he is he is pretty much telegraphing that he's going to be running you know this this kind of concept, bringing the quarter zone to the inside. Um, you know that that's kind of a, a, a tell a telltale sign here. So right there, a little out route. Jair Alexander gets the interception, but unfortunately for us, we're not able to get our feet down. Uh, but that was pretty decent defense, and you're starting to see. Okay, we're adjusting. If he's going to run middle high low to the wide side of the field, you know it's not that hard of an adjustment for us to make. Now, right here, uh, my opponent is going to little gun tight doubles. We're going to go to our little cover two style defense. Does really, really good against stuff like that. And as you can see, we're able to do a pretty decent job. Compression, I think compression is one of the harder offenses to truly stop. Mainly because, number one, you don't see it a ton. And number two, because some of the routes just get to really weird positions on the field. Um, and so you see here, that looks like my opponent's going to go back to this gun tight type of situation. And we're going to just kind of stay consistent. But I found that this, this style of defense right here that I'm running is actually relatively successful. It doesn't always get it. But like right there, and that's probably the one thing that he probably would have. Um, but we're able to get the interception. And it works okay for him. He does get... Gain a couple of yards. I probably should have just swatted that down, um, you know. But we're able to get the ball back now. Right here, this is a really important possession for me. Um, this is a possession where you have to keep it simple enough because right now, well, I guess it's not. I guess it's not as important. I mean, it's important that we get up a possession. That's what I'm gonna. That's all. That's all I'll say. Um, it is important that we get up a possession, but it's not like you know, like do or die kind of thing. Uh, we're in a good position right now. But we want to get up. But my biggest point is that we need to make sure that we turn this into three points. If we don't turn this into three points, that's a big, big mistake. So this should this should result in 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 um, in an easy couple points for us uh, right here, right there, like right there. I probably could have forced the crossing route, but I ended up taking the delay fade just based off the way he was playing defense, and just because I wanted to make sure. Okay, I'm in scoring range now. Uh, right here, he's kind of pinching everybody in. And so I'm going to do this little this little move right here to the outside, just get a couple quick yards, and uh, we'll let the clock kind of tick. And while this while this clock is ticking, uh, we're going to set up our our little package here with the the gun bunch. 
you know, just kind of set that up a little bit. But like right here, when you're trying to really control a game, there's a difference to controlling a game to dominating the game. When you're trying to control a game, like you want it to be as smooth as possible. Uh, ideally, it, it, it ends up, you know, that's really what you're after is you want it to be as smooth as possible. So, you know, I'm going to do things on purpose um, to, to help with that. I'm not going to try to like score, you know, in one play every time. Like I probably could, but like right here, we're just going to, you know, kind of maybe, okay, we're just going to climb, 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 you know, just get down, get a couple yards. You know, we could have, could we have forced the, the the crossing route? We probably could have forced the crossing route, but um, you know, really on this drive, we're okay with taking three. We're gonna just kind of keep it in front of us here. If we can get to halftime and then get up, you know, it's gonna be a good move right here. A little stop and go, a little double juke. We're gonna get in actually for a touchdown, and so we're gonna get on top, fourteen to seven. Uh, good defense by my opponent. One of the things you've noticed is when he switched to the 335 normal. I think every single time that he's come out, he's ran cover four drop. Now, um, cover four drop actually does a really good job against the uh, against the PA boot over because of the way that the, the the outside quarter zone does a really good job um, against that. So, you know, really a cover nine style of defense is not a bad defense for a bunch tight end where you have the 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 cover four side be on the trips to, or on the on the tight end side and you have the cover two side onto the um onto the three wide receiver side and that what you saw there is that that outside quarter will really sit in a good position um if people like to run a lot of crossing routes and so you know we just have to monitor that a little bit but that is the biggest thing so anyways right here he's going to gun tight um trying to just kind of discern like where is he going to throw it where's he going to throw it right here i've got adrian amos over the top and he actually got me over the top right there. That guy has to be very fast if he was able to do that. Um, that's kind of a that's kind of a, a little bit of a unique thing. And that's what I'm talking about about gun tight. Gun tight does some stuff like that, um, where they have these these really good corner routes, these really good routes like that that can do that. And so great job by my opponent hitting me over the top. And um, you know what? I mean, we're gonna have to continue. Now we are still out in front. We we are technically up by one possession because now we get the ball and we're gonna get the ball at halftime. So that's that's great. But we have to keep scoring. So as you see right here, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna put the controller down. Wait. Now you look at the right where it says defense, pick a play, kick off. That means he selected his play. I know it's a simple little thing, but I'm telling you from firsthand experience, you do not want to be given away free possessions um, because you're just being you know kind of naive, naive or just you know not paying really attention to it. Um, a lot of people like to take the ball out because they want to get on a hash mark. I don't value that a ton. Um, I, I do value hash marks and they do help you, but I'm not like that kind of person is like, oh, you have to always run the trips. You know what I mean? Like that's not how I do things. So um, right here he goes back to this little um, this little big nickel over G. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of, you know, maybe he's blitzing everybody again. It doesn't appear to be like that. It appears we're going to see some kind of like, I'm not quite sure what he's doing, honestly. And, oh, man, I almost threw a pick. I got a really nice little rocket catch there. It was a really interesting defense. I think he ran – I think he just ran, like, cover two invert. Um, now we're getting to the part of the video where, you know, your opponent starts to kind of do some things that are just, like, not – you know, he just kind of he's just kind of doing some things that are like, okay, he's over pursuing, okay, he's trying to specifically stop this. So let's go to our counter play here, tight end corner, just a little flood concept to the wide side of the field. That's all that really is. It's very similar to the play flood, a little jukey right there to get us in the scoring range, four four, and this is the perfect time right here for inside switch. Uh, just a little quick snap play. If he's not playing hard flats, we'll hit it. Just quick right there, just a little quick route. And a little double juke, able to get into, you know, get a couple yards up the field quick. And then now we're going to go in a no-huddle situation, and we're just going to try to pop an inside zone. I like to use this little motion right here just to kind of keep it simple, trying to power it right up the middle. And now right here, this is really important. If you look at the top of the screen, you're going to see that we got about two minutes left. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to, like, take it all the way. But we do want to take it all the way down because we want to take that two-minute warning clock stoppage. Um, and the biggest reason why we want to do that is just because we want to, uh, you know, limit his opportunity to be able to go back down and score. Now, he does have plenty of time to do that, but we're going to try to just take one of the clock stoppages away here. 
Uh, if we if we would have just snapped the ball as is, we would have you know basically offered him you know the first play he could do whatever he wanted to do. So anyway, right here, just a little inside zone slamming it, and it actually caused a fumble. Oh my! Didn't see that happening at all. Um, but you know, good defense by him. Now he's not exactly in a great position. So this is a situation where I will cover zero blitz. The biggest reason why I like to cover zero blitz in these situations is because there's just no, like, it's really hard. If he passes, it's going to be really, really hard for him to see. So, you know, right here, we're actually going to go down, and we're going we're gonna to go ahead and spy uh, and really try to, like, you know, make it an effort here to blow this up in the backfield if he runs the ball. Little fullback slam, so like right there, and see, like right there. So right here, I'll take three timeouts. The reason why is I can pin him right here, and then he could be in a position where he has to punt. So I want to like at least force him to have to consider passing the ball or to have to consider doing something, you know? Because in this situation, like right here, now I've got a pretty good opportunity. So like right here, we're going heavy pressure uh, to the point that I'm literally going to use a rush. I'm going to try to really get in here and just go get him. This would be a big safety if I could get him. He's probably going to block, but I got to be ready for that. If the running back blocks, I got to like, okay. And that was actually really bad by me, and I missed the, almost missed the tackle. What I should have done right there is I should have just jumped on the running back route. He ended up not doing that. I thought the running back was blocking right here. Same situation. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, kind of stand like right here. Trying to use a rush right off the edge, right there. That's exactly what I wanted. Force some pressure. So I didn't get the sack. I was hoping I'd get the sack, but I didn't get the sack, which is okay. Um, but now I'm in a position where, you know, we can try to, like, go get him. We can try to block the punt. We can try to, you know, we can try to do some stuff here. Um, so I'm going to move my guy here. Just try to kind of, like, put myself in a position uh, to, to where I might be able to block. All right, we're not able to get in there. You know, maybe I did the, the glitch wrong, but whatever. But now, as you see, now we're in a position where we're not in a bad spot. And if I would have broke that tackle, we could. But now we're in a position where we go down. Three points is huge right here because what's going to happen is we're going to be put in a position then where we're going to get the ball out of halftime or we can go down and say um, we're up now up by not just a field goal, but then if we could be able to get the ball at half and go down, we could be in a position where we're going up by two scores. Now, we've known from firsthand experience that every single time he has been in this formation, he has ran cover four drop. And so we're going to go to our little cover four beater here with this nice corner route right over the top of it. Easy read. And uh, a nice little dot. That's going to put us on the 20-yard line. Really smooth, really easy little laser right there. And that's going to bring us up into this position right here. So as you see, now he's still showing that he's in cover four. And so uh, a way that you can kind of deal with someone that's, that's showing a lot of cover four, if you want to run your boot over play, is just by simply streaking this guy. And snapping the ball kind of right in this little pocket. It's going to allow you to get out of the pocket. It's going to kind of force them to have to run and run and run and run and run. Um, you know what? Right here, we're just going to get rid of the ball. Just throw it away. Keep it. You know, we don't want to risk anything. He actually played it fairly well. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the play tight end corner again. But we're actually going to go to it a little bit differently. So we're still running our flood here. Uh, we're just Still run our option, but we're going to use a smart right of corner route just to kind of have this as a nice little read back corner of the end zone. And unfortunately, our tight end kind of glitched out on us, unfortunately. So that's going to bring up a third down. Um, now, in this situation right here, this is a nice little, uh, again, situational specific call. Um, he's ran cover four pretty much every single time. You know, if he hadn't, if he'd been running other stuff, that'd be one thing. But he's literally ran cover four every single time. So we're gonna go to this little play right here. Um, just get the first down. Nice little easy inside switch laser. It's basically the same concept as tight end corner. It's just we're running it to the other side of the field, and that's gonna put us in a position here that I actually like. Pretty advantageous uh, position. And we're gonna go to inside switch. And use this like basically smart routed hitch route with a corner route here on the right. You know, got a couple of opportunities, but right there, just low ball the hitch and uh, nice little easy laser. 
And that's the beauty of the bunch tight end. The bunch tight end is so hard to stop because the bunch tight end, unlike the regular gun bunch, the bunch tight end forces, I believe the bunch tight end really, because of all the things that you can do with motion snapping, it really does force the opponent to have to defend the whole field. Bunch, really, if you can defend the three wide receiver side well, the the solo receiver side does lack a little bit, especially if you run certain bunches that don't have C routes or they don't have like stuff like that. Whereas with bunch tight end, because you have a tight end on the opposite side of the bunch, you still have the, the three wide receiver flood, but now you also have the ability to flood the tight end side, which is one of the things that I think makes it you know a little bit better than bunch in my opinion, which is why if you want to get my entire gun bunch tight end guide, um, you can get that in the description. But that's also why I like to recommend, you know, the whole Jets playbook. The, the Jets playbook is, in my personal opinion, uh, the best playbook in the entire game. So anyway, right here, we're going to go to a little bit of cover. And I got clicked off here. I got to watch. I'm sure that he's going to do some stuff here. It looks like he's got a receiver downfield. And I wish I would have been on my user. But... 21-14. Now, we, did, we didn't talk about this a ton. We did leave a significant amount of time on the board for my opponent to be able to work a little bit. So that's something that we – that's a little bit of a mistake that we made. Um, we did definitely, you know, definitely leave that time uh, for my opponent. So, you know, just kind of watching here, a little mesh, a uh, little mesh, and then, ooh, I just busted a coverage. I don't know what I did on the right. I got super lucky right there. I'm not sure what happened on the right side of the field. I don't know what, what I did wrong. But we're going to stick with that defense. Um, and I just got to watch the running back. If the running back goes vertical, I need to go with him. Yep, he's going to go. Okay. So we'll just rise with the running back. Oh, man, I timed it wrong. All right, good read. There we go. I think this defense is actually going to be pretty good. Cover three, and I, I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm crazy for thinking this, but cover three I think does a decent job against tight doubles. Like cover three match, obviously they can motion and stuff like that, but the reason I like cover three match against tight doubles is because um, the, the cover three really does a nice little match here. This is like Falcon Cross, an oldie but a goodie. Uh, right here, he's going to throw it up. Now, right here, this is really important. So I've got seven seconds. I want to pitch the ball. Ugh, I tried to pitch it, and I didn't want to able to. So i got six seconds right here to go down and score. So, um, you know, we need we need a specific amount of yardage, but we also need to do it in a specific, relatively fast fashion. So and I'm not sure we're going to be able to, unfortunately, but we're going to try. And we know that our opponent has ran a lot of cover four. So because we know that he's ran a lot of cover four, we're actually going to go to a little bit of a different type of play. So we're going to try, and I don't know if this is going to work well or not, but we're going to try to basically glitch out the cover four. And then I can't remember exactly how to do that. But, um, but yeah, we're going to try to do that. So let's see here. We're going to try to use an option route, and we're just going to try to use like a flat, something like this right here, real simple, and just see if we can't glitch him. I don't know if we'll be able to. And unfortunately, we just got bum rushed. Right there, it probably would have been smarter for me to just like fall down and take time out, call play. Um, so good defense by my opponent. If he stays in that cover four, we might try to do something like that coming out in the opening, uh, opening of the second half. But as you can see here, this is why I think it's so important to kick. So now I've got a one possession lead, but I also get the ball coming out of half. So it's actually, if I can go down and score, I can turn this into a two-possession lead. Whether it be three points or seven is kind of irrelevant. I mean, obviously you want to get seven, but if you get three, it's not that big of a deal. And I've fumbled again, and he's going to score. Gosh dang it. Man, he's hanging around with these fumbles. And that right there is exactly why I should have just stayed in the end zone. I, I kind of didn't follow my own advice and um, paid the price. I think that's my second fumble in this game. He's going to be able to tie the ball game up. So a little frustrating with that, but uh, is what it is. And we need to move forward, not take the ball out, not put ourselves in positions where we can fumble. We've had two fumbles. Now, you've got to think a little bit about the bad AI system. If you fumbled two times in a game, it's probably unlikely that you're going to fumble again. Um, but it is what it is. So anyway, we're going to keep working um, right here. I don't know what happened. 
But we're just trying to get down. We're not trying to do anything crazy. Okay, so somehow this guy finds himself in a tie ball game. I feel like we've been playing pretty good football, but two turnovers and um, a box coverage has really uh, come back to bite us. So we've got to we've you know we've got to continue to adjust. Madden is a game of I think Madden honestly is more of a game of resilience than adjustments. A lot of people say Madden's a game of adjustments, but I think it's a game of resilience. You know, having the you know, the peace of mind, not trying to do anything too complicated, but just saying, okay, you know, really having that detachment, being able to really analyze. So like, as you see right here, um, cover four, cover four, cover four, cover four, climb, climb, climb. But you let that delay fade just do some work for you. It gets us down into scoring position. And now we're going to move relatively quick here. And the reason why is we're going to try to hit him with this tight end corner. Um, again, you know what his kind of MO is out of this formation. He loves to run cover four drop. Um, and this tight end corner play is going to kill that coverage, as you can see right on the corner. Nice little easy dot for us, and that's going to put us at the four-yard line. Now, obviously, you don't you know the dead zone is really what they call this area. It's really hard to score here, but uh, we're going to do the best we can. So we're going to use some motion here, just try to pop an inside zone if we can. Um, little, you know, just a little quick move. We're able to get out there and score. So good drive by the offense. Pretty much did exactly what we wanted it to do. Had a nice little dot from the delay fade. If he's just going to sit and cover four drop all game, the tight end corner is really the answer for that or the motion over. But you see, um, you know, now we're in a good position. We just got to go back out and stop. We need a stop on defense. We need to be able to capitalize on some of this stuff. And if we can get a stop right here, then we can kind of close this game out. We can get up by two possessions and put ourselves in a good position to be able to close the game. So really on defense, we need a stop. That's really what we're after. Um, if we even, even if we hold them to three points, I feel confident that we'll be able to go down and score seven. So, uh, what we're going to actually do, well, I guess he's going to stay in single back. So we're going to go back to kind of the man coverage right here. Little well, 0 one trap out of single back wing flex, not a bad run call, but the run defense from three, three, five wide is so good. Um, Like right here, easy, easy little simple run defense. Kind of knew he was going to pass. And, oh, man, throw out a sack. All right, so that brings up a third and eight situation. This is where the defense really needs to hold. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to shift. We kind of have an idea of what he's going to run. Um, and actually, I think we're going to sit. I think we're going to stick with what we're doing here. Uh, I think we're going to – I kind of want to shift to a zone drop. I actually think I am. I'm going to shift to a zone drop defense on this speci specific position. Uh, and the reason why is just because I have a feeling that, you know, again, and basically what this is is we're going to run cover two to the short side just like this, and we're going to run cover four to the wide side. So just like this right here, very simple little zone defense right there, a little cross, a little whatever. We're going to come right over here, and we need a fumble. Right there, we need a fumble. That's the second time that he's done that. Figured we would be able to get a fumble. We didn't. No one in the middle. And a little drag route, and yet another fumble. User hit stick. So first and ten, uh, Falcon Cross is like his money play. That's what he wants to run. Now, if he runs in tight... It's different than if he runs in the other ones. So, a little dive play, and there you see that's the run defense doing its job. Four carries for two yards. You can't really ask for more. Um, but right here, last time he went no huddle like this. Did this little play action, like little out route. So we got the purple zone sitting right on the out route. Somehow he still completes it, and. Um, that's annoying, but it is what it is. So first and ten situation. Um, we're gonna just kind of stick with the run defense. I, I just believe in the play call we have here. Even if he does this little dealy whack, yep. And that was good defense. And I need to blitz more. I think I, I think we're getting to that moment in the game. That one to three times that I talked about, I have blitzed twice, 
But I think we are getting to that point in the game where I need to send some pressure. So like right here on second down and 10, especially because he's an under center, uh, I'm going to send some pressure at him. I don't think he's going to pass or run here. I think he's going to pass. So we're going to try to just kind of come right in here and blow it up. Get out here, get out here, get out here. And that's got to be an interception. I just they're, throws it into two people off his back foot and somehow doesn't get shamed for it. But that's going to bring up a third and ten situation. So we're feeling okay. We're, we're not in a bad spot here. Uh, we just need to get a stop, whether it be hold him to three or whether it be get a turnover here on third and ten. Now, um, new formation for him. Hasn't ran it all game. And so when someone goes to a formation that they haven't ran all game, I really, really like to blitz them. Uh, and the reason why is just because – I think that it's really hard. They're going to be sped up a little bit. They're not going to have the the precision. You know, they're not used to kind of how we're going to defend them. So just kind of shooting at a, at a user rush, and that's a huge interception. That's what I talk about. One to three times blitzing per game, pick six, and that is a massive, massive play by Jair Alexander. I knew that if we blitzed him, it would cause him to panic a little bit because of the situation and because he had not yet ran split close. Seemed like the perfect time to do that, and we were able to gamble and win. And so that was a huge, huge stop. Now we put ourselves in a position where we can close the game out and um, and just kind of keep, keep, the, keep the ball rolling. Now right here, you have to remember, he has six minutes left in the ball game. So he's going to have to begin to push the ball down the field. This is where I really, really like having a simple zone drop defense to kind of fall back into. And the reason why is because it's harder to burn a simple match defense than it is, you know, it's just harder to burn that defense. And so um, that's what we're going to look to do here. Again, 35 to 21 ball game. We're going to look to pretty much sit in a cover six or cover nine, you know, right here. So right here, our very next thing. So he's going right back to it. And we're going to sit right in our little defense here. Very, very simple little defense using motion snaps and all this stuff. But we're going to be very simple looking to take away this left side. If he does go this way, nope. Streaks, verticals, verticals. Kevin King is normally one of the best people to pick stuff off. He's able to do that, and that is a huge turnover. Now all of the momentum shifts back to our side of the ball. And real quick, this is a little bit of a game management situation. One of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to put your opponent uh, in position where he can get back into it once he's kind of beat himself. And so that's why automatically you're going right to the inside zone. The biggest reason as to why we went there is to get this clock ticking. Get the clock ticking a little bit. Now the clock's moving, and now we can shift back into our passing scheme. Um, I think he's in like a dollar dime or something, so we just have to kind of watch the pressure element of this and what he's doing defensively. But here we've got triangle wide open on the sideline, nice little easy dot. The beauty of throwing, if you fall out of bounds in the third quarter, you'll see here like when I come out, it should take it all the way down to the fourth. Once you get into the fourth quarter, I think that that, that, that rule shifts. Uh, so it doesn't do that as much. So that's why you want to just kind of, you know, keep the clock moving. Right here, I'm pretty much got, you know, everything that I needed. So like right here, um, this is all about just working the clock. I love to use the double juke, even if I fumbled twice. Um, should I be on conservative? Probably, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, but anyway, right here, so you see the situation that we're in. Um, now I can just take clock. So I'm just taking the clock, taking the clock, taking the clock. And then what's going to happen is I'm just going to kick a field goal and go up by three possessions. And that's the beauty of, you know, clock management, working it a little bit. Like I'll throw it right here. We're in a third down situation. You know, just kind of give myself a, a good opportunity. So like right here, um, you know, right here we could go PA boot over. We could go mesh. We could go all kinds of things. Um, the play that I'm actually going to go with, uh, I'm probably going to go with tight end corner. And the reason why – is because we're going to try to hit this circle receiver. Um, and if we don't hit him, then, you know, we still have this triangle receiver here on the other side. But really trying to hit the circle receiver on the right. Right there, real quick read, easy dot. And it's okay that we fall out of bounds because we get a new series of downs and a new opportunity. You'll see here that I think the clock will start to tick a little. No, it won't. Okay. Yep. Yeah, as you see there on the top there, you know, because of the situation, you know, the clock's not going to tick as much. 
but here just kind of letting the you know letting the block set up for us getting down into scoring range and now we go into you know what i would call just a simple little goal line situation so this is a specific situation in the game where we're going to shift down into the goal line offense and when I go to goal line, ironically, it actually makes a lot of sense, especially in the situation that we're in right now, to come out and, and put the ball carrier on conservative. You see that he's in his goal line defense, obviously. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to get one little truck. See how we get like one little trucking animation and uh, just get up field here and kind of close this ball game out. You know, relatively simple. We put ourselves in some rough positions, I would say. But all in all, we're going to end up, I think, coming out on top with this. And again, if you want to get the entire offense or the entire defense that I ran in this video, you can get that in the description. The offense is 15 bucks, defense is 15 bucks, and I'm telling you right now, it's worth every penny. Um, it will help you get better at this game. I guarantee it. But as you see right there, that's kind of perfect. So now we're able to take the rest of the clock. You know, we got the chew clock on here to kind of get the clock moving a little faster, and. You know we're gonna shift now third and goal and again we don't need we don't need a touchdown we just need a field goal so you know anything that we can do just to kind of simply work the clock is actually probably a little bit better if we don't get a touchdown it's probably better so you see here we don't get a touchdown we're gonna to be able to kind of um, you know just kind of come out and shoe clock we're gonna actually come out in a play here and the reason why I like to do that is just to take the entire clock that I possibly can. So you'll see, we're just going to sit here and we're just going to take some clock. Now, if you have not come to a stream before, I stream Madden live every single day. Uh, or actually, not every single day. Monday to Thursday uh, evenings from 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern to 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So if you want to come by and hang out, I'd love to be able to talk with you about Madden. If you want to compete, I play subscribers all the time. We got three uh, games already scheduled today with subscribers, and we'll have games tomorrow as well. So if you want to come by and hang out, I'd love to have you. But as you see right here, we're just going to take it all the way down, take our five-yard penalty, you know, just kind of keep everything in front of us here. And basically, you know, kind of close this ball game out. So 35 to 21, we're going to be able to kick a field goal here. And now what it's going to do is because of the clock management, now my opponent only has a minute and 15 seconds to be able to come back by three down three possessions. So that's why I would say a field goal as opposed to a touchdown. Both of those are good things. Uh, but really the field goal is the priority in that situation. If you can waste a little bit of extra clock, you know, it's a great move. And so we're able to just kind of get out of there. And I think we pretty much took the whole fourth quarter away uh, with our chew clock, with our with our runs and stuff. We got a couple timely first downs on that drive, but able to really get out there uh, and make some good plays. And now defensively, we can just kind of sit back in our zone drops. Uh, I'm going to move my curl flats back to 15 yards in these situations. And the reason why I like to do this uh, is I just think it makes it harder. So we just move everything back here, 30, 15, and 15. This is what I like to go to whenever I want to really close the game out. And you're going to see a lot of this cover um, cover six style of defense. And so as you'll see um, right here, little cover six uh, style. Um, and we're just going to kind of stay right in front of us here, throws it to the short side. You can't do that. Throws it into five Packers, and unfortunately we didn't get the interception. But you see the defense played pretty good. I mean, he completed seven passes. You have to remember, he only completed seven passes. Now, he did complete a few, you know, obviously for touchdowns, but at the end of the day, he only completed seven passes. So you can't be too mad at the defense at the end of this, at the end of this ball game. Right there, he's able to get out of bounds. And that's one of the things, you know, right there, that's on me. I need to be on that side usering. So right here, you know, we're going to really jump jump out here to the sideline just because the short side that's where the user you know right out here just kind of really get out here and i mean i guess good good job good read you know we're just going to try to keep him in balance i think we did right there we really we're trying to just kind of force him to keep him in balance but he ends up getting out of balance which is fine um and right here we're actually going to go to a little bit of a little bit of man coverage here and we just need to watch out for uh 13 on this little like whatever he runs you see just some man coverage and we're going to go hit quarterback force him to stay in bounds now he's going to have to take some timeouts um, another style of defense that you can play that i really really like is like mike blitz three and basically what you'll do is you'll just deep half this right side guy so just like this right here um i think that cover three does do a decent job 
uh, on this left side here, especially if you wanted to turn it into cover four. Instead of an outside quarter, though, you're using an outside third, and that's a little bit better for certain situations, just certain types of things that it is better for. Um, here we're just going to run. Uh, trying to hit him, just trying to kind of like keep everything in front of us a little bit. And again, you see the clock. I mean, he did a good job. I mean, he's gotten all the way down here in, I think, 20, 20 to 30 seconds. So so good job on my opponent. Uh, here we're going to send some pressure just to kind of let him know. And we're going to kind of jump down to the running back here. Just try to force our, force the issue a little bit, trying to keep him in bounds also. And you see there, now he's going to have to take another timeout. Uh, right here, he's going to go to it. Uh, right here, I'm trying to get that off. I did get it off, and I just need to jump out here. And I just missed the interception, but I did get him to fall back for about four yards. So that's going to bring up a third down and three. Now, when I'm in the red zone, I do shift these. So I'm going to put my flats on 20, 10, and 10 in this situation. But if we were in, you know, a little bit closer, I might change that a little bit. So... Anyway, right here, just some more pressure just to kind of force him to have to wrestle with the fact that we can send some pressure. I'm actually going to outside quarter everybody. I like outside quarters in the red zone. Outside quarters in the red zone do a much better job at jumping, like corner routes and stuff like that. And that's a huge sack, and that's going to drop him back several, several yards. So now he's in a fourth down situation. And honestly for him, um, I mean, he's playing for pride at this point. The game's practically over. But it actually is probably the right decision to go ahead and take a field goal and put yourself down by by um, by that possession margin. So you'll see right here, nice little inside quarters. We're going to send some pressure, just kind of let him know where we're at. And then just come up, make a tackle, and that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, today's game. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you saw some of the mistakes that I made, and I hope you saw some of the things I did right. One of the most important things that you can learn in these videos is – what are the what are the breaking points? What are the things? What are the little things? And oftentimes what you'll see in these gameplays is it does come down to doing the little things right. If you can just simply do the little things, you're going to have a lot more success than if you don't. So I, I really, really recommend just focus on the little bitty things that you can do in every gameplay to make it super consistent. Thanks for watching the gameplay. And if you want to get the exact guides that I use, the exact offense and the exact defense, you can get those in the description. I've got links down there for you to be able to access to them.